drill fixtures now. Hi there folks and welcome back to the channel. Today I have a, half, a six and a half inch barrel 22 long rifle Rough Rider by Heritage Arms. Heritage Manufacturing out of Bainbridge, Georgia. Now I've picked up a couple of these handguns lately. There's revolvers. I love the old cowboy style revolvers. They're a lot of fun to shoot. They're, they're slow to consume ammo which in this day and age is a pretty important thing. Uh, plus, I had to switch to shooting with 22s because you can't get primers right now. To read, I do my own reloads, and on top of that, all the other the primers and the powder and the bullets and everything else is so expensive right now. And you can't go out and buy bullets. Can't even find primers. Or you can go out and buy bullets, but they're going to cost you a ridiculous amount of money to shoot your 45s, your 38s, 357s, 44s, and so on and so forth. The the prices are just out of this world right now. So I resorted to, uh, for the same price of shooting a few boxes of the other larger caliber stuff, you can buy a hand, another handgun and save yourself some money and still enjoy some sh target shooting or some, you know, shoot some uh, steel targets and stuff like that. So that's what I've gone and done. So what I have here is a brand new, never been fired, Heritage 22 long rifle. Now this one, is unique compared to my other ones. This is a nine shot version. All the other ones I have are a six shot version. I'll have on order a 44 Magnum cylinder because you can just put a 40, 44 Magnum, a 22 Magnum cylinder in here and nine shot ob obviously as well. They're interchangeable that way, which is kind of cool. Uh, if you have a nine shot gun, you can put a nine shot, you know, nine shot cylinders fits from Heritage. If you've got a six shot revolver, six shot cylinders fit. Uh, on the newer stuff. Now the older stuff, I'm not sure how interchangeable it is, but the stuff you buy today is very interchangeable. But nine on nine, six on six, long rifle magnum, long rifle magnum. You know, you understand what I'm saying? Anyway, you can't put a six shot in a nine shot gun. Won't work. Not time. The timing ain't right, and it won't work. Anyway, I'm gonna. The iron sights on these things are kind of like not awesome. Uh, so we're going to shoot at a target today and you know if you followed me for a second now I've got, had a couple videos out there where I put the red dot scopes on things and I really like the red dot sight not scope red dot sight optics I really like it they, it's, it's a game changer for me because focusing on this rough trough or even on my even the ones that have good sights on it focusing on it and holding it and getting it in the right position consistently is a little tough. Red dot, it's a game changer for me. Now, I see a lot of pro shooters out there have these lit reticles or, or lighted sights or whatever, red dot, green dot, whatever sights on their pistols and their revolvers and whatnot. There's a reason for that. It works. There's a faster target acquisition with both eyes open. You can get on target faster. You can pull up and get on target with both eyes open. You can close that left eye if you need to. Don't have to. Once you train yourself to shoot with both eyes open, you can to each his own. I'm not recommending one over the other. I'm not a, hit the mic. I'm not a pro shooter by any stretch of the imagination. I'm an amateur novice having fun out here in my backyard shooting targets shooter and occasionally go hunting, right? So anyway, let's load up nine shots in this gun or this revolver and we're going to put them at 10 yards here. We're going to set a target up and we're going to shoot and see how it's grouping. Now I've had, the reason I put red dots on some of my other ones is no matter how good and steady you're holding that thing, it's shooting left or shooting right. Or most of everything I've had so far, I've shot left. Now, it could be me, but I'm doing this on a bag. So the bag's very consistent and very locked down. So if it's shooting to the left on the bag, it's shooting left. That's all there is to it. And there is no adjustment here. I've seen one guy take a pliers and bend his front sight. It's like, I can't do that. <laughs> I just can't. I'd rather drill holes in this thing than bend that front sight and mount me a weaver mount on it. And if, I, if that's just, I'm waiting to see if this doesn't shoot very well, I'm gonna show you a new method I've just developed on how to put a weaver mount on here and, and then mount your red dot optical sight on there. Anyway, let's get started. Let's see how it's gonna shoot and that'll determine if we go to next steps or not.
Now we're going to do a little offhand shooting here at uh, 10 yards. I'm going to be shooting at the right hand target. Let's see how good that does. So far, I'm pretty pleased. This thing is a lot better than the other two uh, that I purchased. As far as the iron sights, still difficult to, for me to to line up on these iron sights, though, because they're so they're not sharp. They're I don't know. This leaves a little bit to be desired there when it comes to uh, the sight picture. Let's see how I can do. Nine shots, target on the right. Not too bad. Now over here, this is nine shots off the bag. And it's a little left, but man, that's not too bad. That's not too bad at all. That actually, that could have been a little bit of me, a little bit of gun, but look at what I did there toward the end. Last few shots hit there. This is the same 10 yards offhand, nine shots. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Offhand shooting at 10 yards. Not too bad. I'm, I'm not unhappy with that. Actually, this one's so far of the heritages that I have, this has performed the best, uh, this handgun has. Let's go down and look at the 20 yard target off the bag. Well, I can't complain about that too much. At 20 yards, now this is on the bag at 20 yards. This isn't offhand shooting, this is on the bag. That's not too bad. I, I'm actually pretty pleased with how this thing's shooting. I'm really pleased with it. Um, but I don't think I can just leave it alone. Well, I tell you, if there was a gun I wasn't gonna touch, that it, the shoot's good, does everything it needs to do right out of the box, it's this guy right here. Uh, I'm really impressed. You saw the groups there? You know, not too bad. Not too bad for, uh, for what it is. You know, this is an inexpensive gun. I think this one cost me, what was it at my dealer? Uh, 170 bucks, I think, was what this one cost. And uh, this has got that, uh, case hardened look in this area you know it's just aluminum but it's, it's got the case hardened look to it obviously the barrel steel but uh in the cylinder steel but the rest of it's you know some kind of a uh, alloy anyway shoots good handles good i like the way i'm getting used to these uh the old little six shooters here this is a nine shooter though a little different but uh i can't leave well enough alone uh this sights are hard to see Hard to get a, a good focal point for me on. Uh, I can do it, but it's not enjoyable. The red dot, a lot of confidence in that red dot. So I'm gonna show you, I had talked in a previous video about go ahead, good luck trying to drill this with your cordless drill. Good luck trying to mount a weaver mount with your cordless drill and get it right and not ruin your gun. I'm gonna, I'm gonna eat my words a little bit because I think I've come up with a technique to allow me to use my DeWalt cordless drill and put a weaver mount on top of this thing. Let's go inside the shop and I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do. We're gonna throw this down on some plywood. We're gonna get out the old cordless drill and a little trick that I created to make this thing easy peasy to do. Let's jump inside right now and I'm gonna share my secret with you. All right, we're back in the shop here and I'm just using, I'm doing it as rusty and crusty as I can here. To try and also coming out with the best results that I can come out with. That's the goal here, right? Um, what I've got here is my phone's going off. What? So what we're gonna do here first and foremost, I'm just gonna take the cylinder out. So let's go ahead and pop that out. And then I'll show you some cool stuff. Cylinder's out. Now here's where my trickiness comes in. You guys gotta watch this. Okay, guys. Whoa, can't be having that happen. Let's move our sawhorse over a little bit. There we go. <coughs> now, what I have going on here is a drill fixture that I 3D printed. All right, what I've done here is, you guys saw my last time how I took the grip off and I clamped up against here, leveled the barrel, did all kinds of fun stuff. Well, I got to thinking, maybe there's a better way. So I have a handful of 3D printers, and I thought, well, I can draw and design myself up a drill fixture. So that's what I did. So what I have here is this is PLA printed, 3D printed material. I designed and drew this up. 
And I'm gonna go ahead and put this on the gun and show you how it's gonna perform. Inside here, I've got hardened drill bushings. Now these drill bushings weren't cheap. I got them off McMastercar.com and they were basically about 41 bucks with the shipping included. Uh, total price with shipping was 41 bucks for two hardened steel bushings. Cool part is I can use these over and over again, right? Even if I design a different fixture for the same type of thing, I can still use these bushings over. The way this works, I've designed this here to line up on the barrel. I've designed this to line up on the top part here. And then it goes down past and lines up on the base here. Or whatever you want to call where the bottom part of the cylinder goes. So basically just to put it on there, and it fits relatively tight. I mean, it's, it's tight. It is, you've got to bump it on there pretty good. But I'm just bumping it down, getting it in place where I want it. Just like that. Now what I've got here is my drill fixtures now fit snap tightly onto the gun. It's lined up with the barrel. It's self-centering over here. And I'll show you. I'll take this little rod here. We'll stick right down in here. And you can see that thing. If you hold it up and look down it like I'm looking down it, you can see that thing is pointing straight up in the air like it just don't care. So that's, and I've also jammed it back tight against here. So it's all the way back, and I'll show you why I'm doing that. Because I also have another fixture I made right here that's going to help us out for the second part of this operation. So now, just like that, I'm going to drill this by hand with my Dewalt drill. And in this little bag here, and I'll leave all the links to the description below for all the pieces you need to buy to do this. Because I have a number 31 drill. That's going to be my tap drill for my tap. Then I also have a 648 tap. And the reason I'm using a 648 tap is I buy these rascal mounts. They're little weaver mounts that go for, they're for the... They're made by Savage. They're the Savage Rascal. I think they're designed to go on the Savage Rascal 22. I haven't seen one, so I'm assuming that's what it is. But you buy that kit, the cool part is it comes with two. That's enough to put red dots on two of your guns, which is pretty cool. So now, without further ado, <laughs> the moment of truth, right? Something I said you couldn't do, I'm going to try and do. I'm going to drill... I'm going to let this drill bush and guide me right on down through there. Very light pressure. Just like that, my holes are drilled. Now I'm going to pop this back off. I have two very nicely precision drilled holes here. Now the plan is to place this piece on here and use this as my tap guide so I can tap a perfectly straight hole as well. Now let's go ahead and put the tap drill fixture on. Same, same scenario, bump it down in place, locked in, I've got it pushed up tight against this back so it locates in the same spot, and we should be lined up directly over our holes. Now we'll get a little lubrication and a tap handle and we'll go after it. Now the nice thing about having this little tap guide here is I don't have to worry about trying to keep this thing perpendicular and straight as it goes down through here, now right now it's just kind of finding its way through the plastic. Because I made it so it's just a little bit tight on the tap. And then once I hit the metal, I 
I should be able to tell when I hit it, I hope. Boy, that tapped through so nice, I didn't even know I was tapping. That was held so perfectly straight in line with my hole. Let's back it off and do the other side here. It is nice having this tap guide though to allow this to get started in nice and straight. You're going to get your maximum performance out of your threads this way, which is pretty darn cool. Hard to see when I'm through though. That should do it. Get this tap out and uh, we'll take a look at what we got. Let's blow it off here. I don't mind telling you folks. That is some fantastic looking threads in there. That turned out, I couldn't ask for that turn out any better. That looks really good. That fixture, the two fixtures worked really well for, you know, minimizing the risk of ruining your handgun. Now, some of you might ask, well, why would I pay a gunsmith to do that? Well, I'll tell you why you pay a gunsmith to do this for you, if they're willing to do it for you, is, uh, you're not paying them for the work that they're doing. You are, but you're also paying them to do it because if they ruin your gun, they're gonna they're gonna replace your gun. Um, that's why that's why you pay them a little bit to do this. Now it's like how much can you spend on a hundred and seventy dollar gun, right? Well, for instance, here this little rascal kit's about seven anywhere from fourteen to eighteen bucks depending on where you buy it. Uh, the Drill and tap, I think cost me close to 20 bucks total. Something like that between the two. And on top of that, you've got the little red dot, which is going to cost you anywhere from 45 to 250 bucks, depending on what you're putting on it. So it's like, how much do you put into something like this? Well, when it comes to a hobby, it's like some of it's a challenge of can you do it? Some of it is... Because I do have the know-how, I will do it. And uh, I'm not paying somebody else to do it for me. There's a lot of pride in me taking care of this myself. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and put a little brake clean degreaser on here. And then i got to do my other little modification to this piece. And then we'll be bolting her right on top and hooking her up permanently. Not permanently, but semi-permanently with some red lock or red Loctite, blue Loctite. My goodness, don't use red or don't use green. Use blue. Blue is serviceable. And uh, we'll go from there. Let's go ahead and modify my other pieces on the drill press. Now I'm gonna get you in here right on the nitty gritty. I've got my drill press set with a stop. So it only drills so deep and then stops. And that's so I can deepen this counterbore. All right, what I've done so far, we drilled and tapped this right. I've counterbored this piece. I've taken these screws and I've cleaned them off with brake clean. I've also cleaned this part off with brake clean as well to make sure it's clean and dry and free of any oils. And what that'll do is help my Loctite do what it's supposed to do. So I'm using this Permatex. I call it Loctite, it's thread locker. We're using Permatex blue thread locker. And we're gonna go ahead and just coat. I like using an excessive amount. <laughs> that sounds terrible to say but I can always wipe up the excess here. And if everything's gone according to plan, both these screws should go in with 
be dead lined up with the, the part here and assemble with the greatest of ease. Looks good. They both started in real nice. Perfect. Now I've only got about five and a half threads of contact in here still. And keep in mind, this is just some kind of an alloy. So you, and so is this piece, but you got to be careful and not to over tighten and strip out your threads. And then you're going to an oversized thread and that's a whole nother pain in the butt. All right. Now that we've got that installed, we'll go ahead and wipe off our excess. And since I sprayed that part of my gun with a uh, brake cleaner to clean, to degrease it, I'm going to have to re-oil the gun up, obviously, to keep the barrel from rusting or doing anything I don't want it to do. But uh, that looks pretty good. I think we got ourselves something here. Now we've got a weaver mount right on top of that old revolver. We're going to modernize the old six-shooter. Okay, it's not an old gun anyway, but... We're going to bring a little technology to it here. Looks good. Now what I've got here, I'm trying to remember the brand here. I'll put a link in the description down below. This particular one's called Mound King. And that's, this is the one I'm going to put on this particular gun. So and silly me left the light on, but that's okay. Look at that. They got a long battery life. So we'll go ahead and snag this thing right on onto here, eh? We'll just give that a little, little snugging up here. The old wrist torquematic. Listen to it. Click. Perfectly torqued. All right. Let's go ahead and stick our cylinder back in. There we go. What do you think of that? Pretty slick, pretty smooth, pretty dialed in process, I think. That fixture, that drill fixture, that's the cat's meow right there for sure. That made this job so much easier. Man, I gotta oil this back up. But yeah, that turned out fantastic. Well, it looks like I've lost my daylight for today, so we'll shoot this tomorrow and see how it performs and get her sighted in. All right, folks, we're out here the next day, right after mounting this mound, M-O-U-N-K-I-N-G, Mound King, uh, on this Heritage Rough Rider. I had a chance right before dark to pull off a few rounds, make a few tweaks and adjustments. I think I got it really close after about 15 rounds. Uh, the only thing I got to do now is stick another battery in it because I'm not sure how strong the battery was that was in it, but I do have a spare one I'm going to stick in here. But don't leave it on if you want your batteries to last. Now, they will last a lot of hours, but there again, you never know how old these batteries are or how long they've been in there. And maybe in this particular uh, red, dot, red dot, it has a little more draw on the battery than some of your more expensive ones. This one's only like $25, $27 for this red dot. And so far, with the shots I took last night, I was pretty pleased with it. Now, after dark, the red dot looks really fuzzy, but in the daytime, the red dot looks really sharp and it looks really good. So anyway, we're all set up here. We're gonna go grab another battery real quick, throw in here, and we're gonna throw another, a few uh, offhand shots downrange, and let's just see what we got and see how, how tight a group I can hold with this particular Rough Rider. Anyway, let's get the battery and get to shooting. Alrighty, I'm all loaded up, new battery, ready to go. I've got uh, nine shots in here. We're gonna put nine shots in that left target at 10 yards. And this is offhand, this is offhand stance here.
Well, my first shot dropped low and left <laughs> pretty bad. And then that last shot went off a little prematurely. I wasn't quite ready, but this trigger is pretty light and I had my finger resting a little heavy on it. But the rest of them, I'm pretty pleased with. That's a, that's not a bad group, just offhand shooting here. Let's see if I can do a little bit better on that right hand target. Still nine shots. I'm aiming right at the orange. Okay, one of the interesting things with these red dots is the ability to be able to get your target acquisition with both eyes open. This time I'm gonna try shooting with both eyes open. I've never done this before. This is gonna feel weird. Missed the target completely. Yeah, I'm convinced the two eyes open doesn't work. Let's go back to one eye and see if we can tighten that group back up again. That's better. Well, we definitely tighten that group up a little bit. We'll take a closer look here in a minute. Those first two shots were a little rough. Now we're gonna take some shots down there at the 20 yard mark. Let's see how many I can put on target. Hopefully the red dot performs as well as it does at 10 yards. My feeling is gonna tell me I'm gonna aim at center the whole time. And let's just see how, how close I can group them. Here again, I'm hoping that it'll group, but I know my aim, since I sighted it in for 10 yards, 20 yards isn't gonna be dead on. Well, it wasn't awful. All right, we're gonna send the first six shots just on the steel hanging down there. Let's see if we can hit that. It should be easy, because that uh, the steel on the left is bigger than that black spot on the target. The steel on the right is uh, smaller. Well, that's an easy three for three on that one. Let's see if we can do three for three on the little guy. Missed. Got it. Missed. <laughs> That's looks like because I'm typically what I'm doing is hitting high and right a little bit at that distance. So I'm going to aim for the lower left part of that small steel target. Yep. Nope. Yep. Shooting steel like that's pretty fun. Well, folks, I hope you enjoyed this video. This thing works pretty swell. Uh, I, I kind of I dig it. Um, the one thing I will say about the red dot on this Mound King is not quite as prominent as it is in the Fiachi Fiachi one I did or the Bushnell one. Uh, the red dot you got to turn it clear up to even with a brand new battery I had to turn it clear up to uh, eight or nine in the bright sunlight. I'm also kind of have the sunlight in my face. Uh, eight or nine it goes all the way up to eleven, but eight or nine you can heat, see it pretty easily. Low light conditions, or if you're shooting in where there's a shelter, or if you're in the woods or something and you're out shooting, uh, it's probably going to be a little bit, it'll probably be okay. Uh, I wouldn't discount it because the nice thing I like about the lower light red, or, low, or the, let's just call it, I think I'm yelling because I got these earplugs in. Let's take the earplugs out. Anyway, one thing I do like about it is that low, little lower, more subtle light doesn't blow out the target. And you, when you put it on target down there, it looks really good. And uh, we got a shooter here. This thing, this thing holds a pretty good group. I'm pretty happy with it. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna kick this thing out of bed for eating crackers. That's for sure. So highly recommend it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, the little fixture I made, the jig I made for drilling and tapping these. Um, I'm not going to put these up for sale on eBay or anywhere. If you're interested in me printing you a set, now here's the trick. The set to print it and all the stuff I've got involved with it for the 3D printing and whatnot, you know, I got to sell a set of those jigs for 20 bucks for the drill jig and the tap jig. Now that doesn't include the drill bushings. The drill jig bushings cost another $40 on top of that. So you could have $60 wrapped up into just coming up with a jig to drill this. Now, this jig I've got, I can use multiple times on multiple of this same style gun. 
I could literally drill hundred, drill and tap hundreds of guns with it um, for the price of the $60 I got invested. Uh, actually, in the plastic itself, I've got a lot less invested in that. But anyway, just letting so you know, if you're really, truly interested in it, you know, and you have a PayPal account, I contact my contact information is down below. Email me. I will hook you up with my PayPal account. And so you can pay me and I can ship you. A set, and we'll we'll negotiate price online. I'm not going to finalize a price yet, uh, but we can chat via email if you're interested in a set of those uh, drill fixtures. There again, this one turned out perfect. Uh, I couldn't I couldn't be happier with how it turned out. It works really well, and you believe you me, there's going to be a few more of these Heritage Rough Riders in my future. Uh, just to give you a, a clue, there's another one. More on that one to come later, but uh, I just can't help but put these red dots on things because they're just so cool when you go to shoot. It's just really neat how they work. So anyway, hope you folks have found this video informative and helpful. Uh, shoot some tight groups out there, guys. Enjoy the sport, and I'll see you on the next video. This is Michael saying, if it ain't broke, fix it till it is, and I'm out of here. Did I hit record? Yeah. Whew. It's recording. I don't know if I can remember that and do that again. <laughs>